Well, I sang with a group that was born right in this community. 45, 45 years last year, we a cappella, no music. We didn't need no music. We just sang, sang. We had a bass, and he would bass, and we'd back him up. 45 years we sang together, all from this community. No music. We didn't need none. That's amazing. So there was no organ or anything like that? Yeah, it's been here, oh, yeah. both of them on both sides, but oh, just we just started it? over in that house. We started over there, with, I had to hold on to a broom. And my brothers and sisters, we hold on to the broom and we would sing with the broom for the mic. <laughs> they, they say, we saw a picture of you holding on to the broom. What were you doing? I said, that was the mic. <laughs> we sang on that and we practiced over there. We sang, sang. Then we came over here and we started singing. He sang with a small choir group of children from this area when they was like teenagers. Some of them weren't even teenagers. We had a group together. The pastor had us singing, a couple selections. And But I was singing since I was four years old, me and my sister. We would go to where my father lived at and sing in their big church, I Butler Town, Mount Olive. That's a new one they built too. But I just love music. I say, get hooked up with music. And I say, it'll keep you going. Walk right, right across the street, yeah, right across the street. Go to the school, and all our children be there. Say, hey, you back? I said, yes, I'm back. And I had, I loved my teachers. We all of us, we had one teacher. Some of them stayed for maybe two years or more, and then the next year we had another teacher. Mostly, all of them were women. We didn't have no men teachers though. Most all of them was women, and uh, we had to sit in class and. Teacher would talk to us and read to us out of books and things. We had to sit there and we listened. And then she would teach the first grade how to use pencil and paper. Make an A, make a B, make a C, and she would write something on the blackboard. Then when she got done with the first grade, she said, you all stay there and read your books and do your writing on your papers. She would move over to on the other side to the second graders. So the six grades in there, one, two, three, four, five, six. And she would teach each grade by itself. So, I mean, you, when we got a little old, we was in like third or fourth grade, we could listen to what the fifth, sixth grade was learning, and that helped, helped us even more. They said, what were you listening to for? I said, well, nothing else we could do. And I said, we could look at the teacher. She would be writing on the blackboard, and, we, and then she would tell the other class, read that, what did that say? And I said, and that helped us. That's why I still love them blackboards over there. No, every Monday, every half a day. I couldn't come for a half a day, every Monday. The washboard and things is in that part now. <laughs> washboard and the tub is still in there. And the little children come down, every, used to bring them down from the schoolhouse. They come up from the schoolhouse, I wore it. And they would look and they looked at it and I said, that's a tub. They said, oh, you get a bath in there? I said, I wash clothes in it. I said, wash clothes in it. This is a washboard. I said, then you had to ring them out. And I said, my mommy learned me how to do that with my hands. I said, that's why my hands are still sore now. <laughs> but when I got my washer and my dryer, I just thank God for it because I didn't have to do no more washboard and tub. The teachers even cooked over there and fed us over there. That's why the tub, um, that a pump is there. Why well, we had to wash our hands and she cooked, cooked once a day, and we had food over there, had big pots of beans, soups, salads, and she cooked, and we sat there at lunchtime, say grace, and then we would eat there. I see, wow. So all that was there, yeah. because before, before when I was going to school over there, we didn't have, we didn't have any electricity. We had lamps. I had, to, before I even left home, Every day I had to wash all the lamp chimneys and make sure the lamps were filled up. Same thing over in the schoolhouse. Got one lamp still sitting over there letting them see. Say, we had a lamp. Say, you don't turn on your lights. I said, we didn't have no electricity down here. They said, huh? We was going to school with no electricity down here. The only one had telephones was the lady that lived up on the end of this road. They were penders. I don't know if you ever heard of them or not. They was penders. Alan Penn and his mother and father lived with Miss Darfy. They live up on in the room, and they was the only one who had a telephone. So I like all the subjects. I like writing. We had to write uh, paragraphs and they, 
And I said, I even had to write on the blackboard. And I was telling them one, they say, oh, what did you write? I must be quiet in class. I must be quiet. I, I had to go over the whole board, all the way from top of the board to the bottom. And then she said, I said, I'm finished. And she would come and take the eraser and erase it all along. She said, do it again. I said, huh? She said, write it again, all the way across, all the way down. <laughs> after that, I, I knew I, after that I behaved myself. I was quiet. <laughs> Irene, I-R-E-N-E. What's your laughing? Good night, Irene. Good night, <laughs> Irene. I'll see you in my dream. <laughs> my last name is Wilson. Irene Wilson Moore. But I married a Moore. But my my red name is Irene Wilson Moore. <laughs> but I just I still love my gospel music. Yeah, me too. I love my gospel music. You have a favorite gospel song that you love more than anything? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord hath made.